What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. I'm Mike, aka Operation DX, and we are now in the fourth episode of my series where I am attempting to build a successful space program in KSP. Pretty much going to do the same thing I always do in the beginning of every episode. Just check out my contracts and see what's going on. Probably going to pick up a couple more. So here is something almost identical to what we did during the last episode. Uh, so I'll go ahead and probably cut that up just a little bit. Um, there's another one to collect a little bit of science. While I do that, I'm going to try to... Uh, collect the science while I do that uh, little hop for the orbital thing uh, that was to test the uh, jet engine and then here we go this is a big one this is actually to get to the moon collect some science and land on the moon all that good stuff so I'm probably gonna have to choose my research wisely which I haven't got a ton of research yet so I uh, it's gonna be really tight I'm gonna have to figure out exactly what I need to get here Okay, well, since I need to do the science experiment uh, in orbit, I think it's in orbit. Maybe it's just around Kerbin to fulfill that contract. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up this one here, uh, which gives me the thermostat. And that will allow me to collect a little bit of science because I've collected a lot of the basic science already from launching rockets, doing the uh, crew report and the uh, EVAs and pretty much everything that I can do to get science. And every time I check those... I seem to get uh, zero science. So what I'm going to do is just um, reload the same craft from the previous episode. I'm going to strap a couple of these thermostat guys on here and uh, try to collect um, some readings as I go along up in my ride. And like I said, I'm going to cut this up a little bit so we can speed through the video, get to the next phase, which um, I'm probably going to launch another rocket uh, to land on the moon. Yeah, that's going to be our next big launch, I think. So let's just go ahead and double check. I think everything's good with this. I don't think I have to make any changes. Um, just need to get the science and get these guys up into a suborbital flight. So on the launch pad here, I'm going to collect a little bit of uh, science with using the uh, thermostat. Go ahead and launch this and then go ahead and make a cut real quick here to the next part where I'm actually going to be collecting some more science up here about uh, 10,000 meters. Um, just try to get every every level of the uh, the atmosphere, except for I'm not going to be able to get uh, far Kerbin. And then uh, I think I can do one more crew report and one more thermostat check here in orbit. And that's pretty much all the signs I'm going to be able to collect here. And again, I'm not going to show myself fall all the way back to the surface. We've done that during the last episode. So let's just go skip forward just a little bit here to where I'm landing down. And I'm going to go ahead and recover this craft near the launch pad. Uh, I did use Jeb on that flight, so I got to use SAS. So it wasn't uh, as crazy as the last one where it was a little more interesting with Bill flying it. <laughs> Trying to stay on top of that nav ball. And then I'm just going to go ahead and confirm all the stuff I got there. Uh, that science contract was pretty nice. Gave me a nice little boost when the money... And I needed that because very shortly I want to go ahead and upgrade the VAB. I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. And now I've got a little extra science. Now here is the point where I've got to make some decisions. See, if I pick this one to get the fuel line, my rockets are going to be much more efficient. And I don't have to build such big monstrosities. And then here, I don't know, I'm probably going to need this one for the struts. Uh, this is kind of a toss-up here. So I, I went ahead and picked up the struts instead of the fuel lines, which was probably a mistake because I'm going to have to build a bit of a monster. But before I go ahead and build that, I'm just double-checking here. I've got to do that one contract that tests out that jet engine, um, which is a really quick, simple thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, clear this out and build something really quick with a small fuel tank with that jet engine. It's kind of interesting because you get to use some of these parts before uh, you actually unlock them. You can see how that's blue there. I haven't actually unlocked this yet, which is a it's a low tier thing in the science tree. Just haven't gotten around to it. So all I had to do is activate that in the launch pad. That is done. I completed that contract. Uh, pretty much recover all the parts. Uh, Jeb gets no experience for that. That kind of makes sense, I guess. And now it is time to go ahead and I'm going to load my basic command pod. 
Uh, but I'm going to completely rearrange this thing. I'm actually going to use some of the new parts that I have not actually tested out yet. Fortunately, I kind of know what's going on with them because, uh, like I said, I've been watching a couple of Scott Manley's um, career mode videos. So uh, I know how to utilize these nice and good. So I'm going to go ahead and stick four goo canisters in here. I'm going to stick uh, four batteries and just in case... Um, I'm going to put some thermos thermostats in there, and actually uh, what I was going to say just in case is I was going to put a transmitter on this guy. Uh, if I get into trouble, I can at least transmit some of that science. Um, again, these LV909s, a uh, little bit less impulse, so they give you a little less. And because I don't have fuel lines, this is a less efficient design, so again, it has to be somewhat of a monster craft. Uh, this is going to be a three-stage rocket. And hopefully it will be enough to get me all the way to the moon and with the ability to land. And then I'm just, just for safety, I'm going to stick some more liquid fuel tanks on the outside here with the LVT-30s. Uh, I went ahead and cut the gimbal on all of the, uh, the rounded rocket, I forget what they're called, <laughs> engines. Because um, this thing would probably start to wobble out of control and I'm probably want to put some aerodynamic fins on this guy to make sure that it's somewhat stable but you can see that this is a monster and now I'm just checking all of my action groups which there are <laughs> a bunch of them so yeah this thing has a lot of stages and we'll go ahead and name this moon lander one I forgot to put on my legs there we go I think we're good and I'm going to go ahead and launch this guy. Of course, I sped up the video for this because it's a little bit larger of a build. I didn't want to spend a ton of time. I think it took like, like 15, 20 minutes to actually build this thing. I uh, can't remember, but I want to save some time. That way I can show more in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this guy and speed things up again as usual. Get this thing into orbit. And then we have essentially two craft to deal with. But... Because I am flying this craft to the moon, it almost nullifies the other craft that is flying to the moon just to, ooh, a little bit of explosion there, uh, just to fly to the moon, uh, around the moon to complete that contract. But the good thing is, is it has all of its science packages unused. So with these two flights here, I'm gonna collect a good amount of science, which is gonna be able to let me unlock a bunch of new stuff, which will probably unlock some different and interesting contracts. I definitely want to get the Mimus contract before I get, like, say, the Duna contract. Because, I don't know, I just want to maximize on my, my money here. So, anyways, just doing the last phases here. And I, I did exactly what I didn't want to do here. And that's, again, because of the fuel lines and... Ooh, it's pretty dark. Sorry, you can't really see anything. We can see some stars. Ooh. Of course, I still haven't unlocked lights and solar panels, so I tried to turn the camera there towards the nebula so you can somewhat see the craft. I used to kind of do this thing with a video where I'd show it like black and white so you could actually see what's going on, but uh, some people just didn't like that effect. They always complained about it. So not doing that. And again... We are speeding things up here for uh, my ejection burn towards the moon. And usually the conics, again, always screw up for me, but it looks like it's good here. So you can see kind of both these craft headed towards the, the same destination. One's going to land, one is not. One's just going to do a pass by. And the fuel on the first one is actually pretty low. It's kind of scaring me. But... Now that I'm in somewhat of a high curve in orbit, I haven't collected the science from here. So I'm going to go ahead and do crew report, use my little lab guy thingy my bobber, and then go, go, go ahead and do a goo. And then I'll save one goo for the moon, and then I'll go ahead and do an EVA report right here. So that will give me a bunch of science once I actually get these two guys back to Kerbin. Hopefully I can land them safely. That is the plan. Okay, so I almost forgot about this. I actually need to make a little bit of a correction burn because I couldn't tell what was going on. If I would have just left it alone when I did my initial burn, everything would have been fine, but I actually went back and forth and uh, messed it up a little bit. So there we go. That is perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and speed time up once again and then go ahead and get this first craft into a stable orbit. So I have essentially... 
completed this contract. Yes, you can kind of see that even with the video sped up, you can see the flashing green in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and use the goo and get uh, my last bit of science that this ship is actually going to be able to collect. And um, <laughs> I have a bad habit of screwing things up uh, around these later stages. So um, I just have this like, like I want to hit the space bar for some reason. Don't hit the space bar because like that'll completely ruin that flight. So anyways, got the EVA report. Uh, got my goo report, have myself in a stable orbit, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to the other craft that's going to land on the moon, which has somewhat, as a, somewhat of a decent fuel supply. I should be able to do this. It's going to be really, really close. Like I said, you get less real estate with that LV-909 than you used to. And because I decided to go and get, get the struts instead of the fuel line, it makes it a little bit harder. You'll see, like, the second I get those fuel lines, my rockets are going to be less um, elaborate. So switching back to the first craft again, uh, spend, I have plenty of fuel, actually, and I got myself into a uh, trajectory where I'm actually going to hit the atmosphere, aero break, and then that should bring me back down into Kerbin. So that first uh, aircraft spacecraft is set now um i'm just trying to collect all the phases of the science here for the moon uh I typically accidentally miss a few you know i get all excited and i um miss out on some of that good science that i could have collected that's all right though if i miss out on some it's not that big of a deal uh, we still of course have our minmus trip and after this trip i will have fuel lines for sure that's one of the things i'm definitely going to unlock and then we'll probably get some more cool contracts after uh i get these two landed down all right so of course i want to land my craft down on the light side of the moon so we can see what's going on we have no lights and that would just be no fun if i landed down and we couldn't see anything so let's go ahead and collect a little bit more science. This time I'm just going to keep the video. I <laughs> can't talk again in this video. Just going to go ahead and keep this part sped up uh, to try to show more. Trying to show more. All right. Uh, fuel is getting a little low, but I do have three uh, boosters right now, which, which is helping me. Um, I think I should be able to do it. And just gonna try to land down gently. Of course, by doing this, usually, I just, I don't like to do the suicide burns. I never like to do it. I like to do the gentle set down, whatever. Dude, if I need to send a rescue mission to go pick up the pilot, then that's what I'll do. But uh, I hate to do suicide burns because I usually always destroy my craft. Anyways, it's not a problem. We landed down safely, and now it's time to collect some of the really good science because we've actually landed down on the moon surface but it doesn't look like we've completed that contract i believe to complete the moon landing contract we need to get the science back to kerbin and that will trigger the mission so uh i still believe we get money for each phase though um and i'm forgetting how to play the game um <laughs> I forgot how to activate. It's the R key. How to activate my jetpack. Yeah, sad day for me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get uh, my crew report. All right, my sample. Oh, I can't do samples yet. I have to upgrade another one of the buildings to do the samples, and that's even more science. So EVA report. I'm sorry, I said crew report. And then of course I got to plant my flag and I can't remember, hmm, which pilot was actually flying which mission? Oh, this is, this is Jeb. Okay, so I can go and say uh, something stupid here. Jeb, yeah? Cool moon, Jeb. That is lame. Uh, I couldn't have done anything more lame than that. I should have just said I was here, Jeb, like I did the last flag. Anyways, that is pretty much going to wrap things up for this one. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.